Marcus Aurelius Severus Alexander Augustus was the final emperor of the Severan dynasty, a dynasty that ruled the empire for four decades. It is in the context of Elagabalus's faltering regime that Severus Alexander rises in prominence, as the powerful matrons of their family found him easier to control than his more erratic older cousin. The Young Caesar Severus Alexander spent his childhood and youth in the imperial household, owing to the closeness between his grandmother, Julia Mesa, and her sister, the Empress Julia Domna. When Julia Domna's son, the Emperor Caracalla, was murdered in 217, the influential sisters were banished to their hometown of Emesa in Syria by the short-lived Emperor Macrinus, where they consolidated their power and won over the local soldiers by promising large amounts of money and by claiming Julia Mesa's grandson was a bastard son of Caracalla, whom they promptly proclaimed emperor. And after Macrinus had been defeated in a battle outside Antioch, the 14-year-old grandson of Julia Mesa became emperor of Rome. He is commonly referred to as Elagabalus after his patron deity, Elagabal. But his imperial name was officially Marcus Aurelius Antoninus, a name he adopted to further reinforce his spurious claim to be related to Caracalla. Julia Mesa was naturally hoping to control Elagabalus to maintain her own position as the power behind the throne, but his eccentricities were alienating the Senate and the soldiers, and thereby threatening her own status. To maintain her grip on power, she persuaded the Emperor to elevate his younger cousin, the young Severus Alexander, by adopting him and bestowing the title of Caesar on him. Despite the public image of harmony surrounding the adoption, the relationship between Severus Alexander and his older cousin was increasingly fraught, and our sources claim that Elagabalus tried to have his younger cousin murdered on at least two occasions when it had become apparent that he could not control him. Elagabalus grew increasingly suspicious when Severus Alexander's popularity outshone his own, and the emperor was infuriated by Julia Mamea's intervention in her son's education and training, preventing him from sharing in Elagabalus's priesthood. Augustus When Alexander was not seen in public for some time, the Praetorian guards grew restless, fearing that Elagabalus had done some harm to his cousin. Elagabalus was forced to go to the Castra Praetoria to calm the situation, but even though Severus Alexander was unhurt and soon arrived at the camp himself, Elagabalus was cut down, and Severus Alexander became Augustus on March 13th, 222, aged only 13 years old. Severus Alexander's mother, Julia Mamea, and his grandmother, Mesa, exercised a great deal of influence over the young emperor, and the new regime took steps to placate the Senate by including prominent members of that body in the Imperial Council. A figure who rises above the otherwise indistinct council advising Severus Alexander early in his reign was the jurist Gnaeus Domitius Ulpian who had served as a legal advisor to both Septimius Severus and Caracalla. Ulpian became a guardian for the young emperor and was granted the sole prefecture of the Praetorians. Cassius Dio states that Ulpian corrected many of the irregularities introduced by Elagabalus. However, Ulpian would not last long. He was murdered in 223 at the hands of the Praetorians. Severus Alexander's inability to save his prefect, who had sought sanctuary from the guardsmen in the imperial palace, is revealing of the dynamic between the emperor and his soldiery. This relationship would prove increasingly precarious throughout his reign. Unfortunately, much of Severus Alexander's reign has been lost to history. We lack reliable sources for much of his reign. Cassius Dio was a contemporary of the events he describes, and he was even consul together with the emperor, but his account peters out at this point, as he was appointed to various governorships which forced him to spend time away from Rome. He even writes himself that his account is less accurate. 
and Herodian, while a contemporary source, is very superficial and is mainly writing for the Greek East. And his biography in the Historia Augusta seems to be mostly fictitious. Rome enjoyed peace and stability for the most part in the 220s, which allowed the new regime time to concentrate on internal affairs and stabilize after years of inadequate leadership. Severus Alexander inherited a relatively bleak financial situation from Elagabalus, but he reformed the state finances, and numerous structures in Rome were restored, including the Colosseum and the Baths of Caracalla and of Nero. Sassanid Persia Rome's rival in the east, the Parthian Empire, had long been under internal pressure with successive civil wars, and by 224 the Parthian Empire had been supplanted by a new Persian dynasty. This was the rise of Sassanid Persia, led by Ardashir the Unifier. Sassanid Persia would prove to be a lot more ferocious and aggressive than the Parthians had ever been. Ardashir had begun to expand his empire to incorporate the states around the old Parthian kingdom. This, naturally, brought him into contact with Roman frontier territories. The Persians attacked Hatra in 229, and by 230 Severus Alexander was preparing for an eastern expedition and left the following year. There seems to have been trouble in the armies of the east. The Mesopotamian legions had murdered their governor, and the legions from Egypt were restless. Coins were issued at this time proclaiming the loyalty of the army, which is often an indication of wishful thinking rather than reality. Initially, Alexander tried to reach out to the Persians by diplomatic means, but when that failed, he planned for an attack on Ardashir. Using Antioch as a base, Alexander organized the assault in three columns, leading the central one himself while the others marched to the north and south, one to Armenia and then into Media, and the other towards the city of Stesiphon. The results were mixed, with huge losses on both sides, but especially to the Roman troops, which marched back through the hostile heights of Armenia. Herodian offers a damning indictment of the campaign, but while Rome seems to have suffered severe losses, Severus Alexander's achievements were perhaps not as abysmal as they have been painted. The Persians remained quiet after the campaigns, not causing any serious trouble until the 240s under Ardashir's successor, and Rome managed to maintain control over Mesopotamia and caused the Sassanid armies to retreat and regroup. While it seems that no official peace treaty was established between Rome and Persia at this time, trouble in the north called for the emperor's attention. While he was still in Antioch, Alexander received news of disturbances on the Rhine and Danube. He returned to Rome in 232 to celebrate a triumph over Persia, before beginning preparations for the war on the northern frontier. Death in the North Severus Alexander chose Mogontiacum as his base launching an offensive in 234 against the German tribes who were by now calling themselves the Alamanni, a confederation of many tribes. After the initial assault, Alexander sought a diplomatic solution, allegedly offering money and perhaps food tributes to buy the tribesmen off. This caused dismay in the Roman army. Severus Alexander's own soldiers apparently objected to being denied the chance of personal profit from a campaign and balked at what they viewed as cowardice on the part of their emperor. Those whose relatives had suffered would seek revenge and would be very much opposed to withdrawal and then subsidy payments to the tribesmen who now seemed to be rewarded for attacks on Roman territories. The long-standing inability of Severus Alexander to exert and maintain his authority over the soldiery finally boiled over, with the legions declaring one of their own as Augustus. Gaius Lullius Varus Maximinus, an officer who had been appointed by the emperor to train new recruits. In the spring of 235, Severus Alexander was finally abandoned by his praetoriums, who defected to Maximinius's cause. After being forsaken by his bodyguard, the emperor was eventually murdered at his camp near Mogontiacum, along with his mother 
who had accompanied him on each of his expeditions. Maximinus Thrax was a Thracian who had joined the army and risen from the ranks, the first soldier to become emperor. Only a few decades after Septimius Severus had opened up military careers, broadened the base of recruitment, and facilitated promotions for outstanding soldiers and junior officers. Final thoughts Severus Alexander's reign was largely peaceful and stable. The achievements of the emperor during this period are often lost in the shadow of the powerful imperial women around him, or overlooked owing to a focus on the military struggles he faced toward the end of his life. In fact, there is much for which he ought to be recognised. Even Herodian, who is usually critical of Alexander, especially of the power his mother seems to have had over him, begrudgingly sums up his reign that his rule had been faultless in nearly every way, save for the failings of his mother, whose actions incurred blame for the emperor. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and reach more people. The next video in this series will be on Maximinus Thrax.